Melvin Black, and I'm going to demonstrate how to create dashboards using Performance Point Services. Performance Point Services is part of SharePoint 2010 and above. To begin, you first need to open up the Business Intelligence Center as part of SharePoint. I'm going to start by selecting Performance Point Services. And I'm going to create the dashboards using the Performance Point Dashboard Designer. I'm going to launch it by selecting Run Dashboard Designer. Now that I have the Dashboard Designer open, I'm going to first create a connection to the data source and to do that I select data connections menu option and I right click and select new data source I'm going to connect to a tabular data source so I'm going to select analysis services and then OK property page is uh, open for the data source. I'm going to specify the location of the data source and in this case it's called SQL BI uh, tabular and the data dates is uh, June and I'm going to specify the model. change the name to Tom Tyler. And now I'm going to save that. All right, now that I created a data source, I'm going to create a report to connect to that data source. To do that, I select the performance point contact folder, select new, and then report. I'm going to first create a graphical analytical chart. So I'm going to select analytical chart and then OK. I have to specify the data source. So I'll select Tom Tyner and then finish. Now that the report is created, uh, it's going to allow me to drag some items that you can access. So Y and access and to do that I'm going to uh, expand measures and then dimensions here and in this example I'm just going to add a sales measure to the series box here and then I'm going to also specify the dimension and in this example I'm just going to look at the sales data for a few weeks so I'm going to just drag over to the date label Now you can see it created a graphical bar graph that shows the dates and the sales. And if I hover over particular bars, you'll see that it gives me a little bit more information. All right. And there's an additional thing I want to do is I want to eventually filter this information by food category. So I'm going to add another dimension here. And I'm going to add category and I'm going to drag that to the background. And if I hit this arrow here, the, by default I have them all selected and I'm going to leave that as all selected for now and just select cancel. And I'm going to rename this report. I can do it right here by right click on the select rename or I can go into the properties and rename it here as well. I'll call this sales Save that. And I want to create another report. I'm going to right click performance point content and select another report. This time we're going to use an analytical grid. And I'll select OK. 
and then we're going to specify compiler again and select finish. This time I'm going to do it slightly different than my previous version. Um, I'm going to specify uh, the menu option here. And I'm going to drag over the, men the, the diamond menu hierarchy. Okay, and I'm going to expand it. And it's important that I do this during the report creation process because the initial view of the deploy dashboard deploy dashboard will be very similar to what I have here. And I'm going to add some measures. So in this case, let's look at quantity. All right. And I also want to show percentage of quantity as well. Okay. And we can see that uh, specific groups list the percentage of quantity. And um, I'm just going to leave it as is. I'm going to change the name. I'm going to properties and I'll say uh, diner or diner item cleanup group. And I'll save it. All right. And also, I want to do one extra thing here. I want to add that filter. So let me add that category. I did with the previous report. And again, I don't want to make any changes, so I'll just specify the default memory at all. I'll select cancel to ensure I make no changes. And now, uh, again, I'm going to save that again. And now that I created two reports, uh, I'm going to also create a filter. And I'm going to use the member selection, which is uh, very useful for. OLAP queues. And I'm going to specify Tom's Diner once again. I'll select that. And this time, since I'm filtering against a category dimension, I'm going to specify that dimension. And that's on the top here, so I'll select that. OK. And I'll specify which members I want to use. And I want the filter to use all of these options, so I'm going to select them all. Select OK. And for filter measure, since this dimension impacts all measures, I can just leave the default there and just select percentage by selecting that. And I want to use multi select, so I'll select that option and finish. And I'll set to properties and I'll just call this food category. create a dashboard so I can create another performance point content and I'll select dashboard and since I have three items I'm okay with using any other templates that have three items I'm going to use the default one selected here all right and I'm going to give the dashboard a name let's call it starters I'm going to drag over the filter into the particular zones so the top zone I'll use for the filter I'll just drag that into that box I have two more zones here the left column and the right column so I'll add the two reports I created diner item quantity and sales data by day now, even though I added a filter to this dashboard location, that does not make the filter impact these reports. And this is important because I can have filters for different reports, or I can have reports that are not impacted by the filter. So to accomplish making the filter work for the filter impact the reports, I have to drag over what I what we call the menu unique name, which is essentially the name of 
the dimension that I'm using. Now again, it, yep, it does use the MDX name or the DAX name, so that links together. And since I'm using the same data source, it should work just fine. And I'm going to do the same. So that should be enough for the dashboard configuration. And I can give it a name, so I can call it Dynamics Tab Activity as the page. And if I had a new page, or if I had a second page, I can add another template. But in this example, I'm only going to use one page. save the dashboard and now I have all these items saved inside this dashboard designer. Now to publish it to SharePoint all I need to do is right click the dashboard and select deploy to SharePoint. All right, and I can leave the default settings here and since I don't have any other locations in SharePoint I'm going to use the default dashboard location. And I can add this page list for navigation, which essentially creates breadcrumbs. Since I only have one page, it's not that effective, but I'll just select it anyway for this example. So I'll select OK, and now it's going to deploy the dashboard I just created to SharePoint. And it's also going to automatically open up an Explorer window so that I can look at the dashboard that I just created. And there you go, there's the dashboard. And as you can see, I have my food category filter. And it, by default, it looks like it selected breakfast. But if I select a different menu option, like um, a dinner, and apply, you can see that it changed that to report. If I added you know, something like fruit, which is probably not a lot of data, well, you can see reflected that change. And again, if I wanted to make any changes, I can go back to my dashboard designer and configure the dashboard in, in, in any other um, additional configuration that I may need. And that's when I say that this actually concludes my training.